if you listen to this, we are the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust, so we're always trying to show the Los Angeles or Southern California perspective. So this is Jack Taylor. He went to Hollywood High School, and he was actually a POW in Mauthausen in Austria. And here's where he talks about his experience. This room is called The World That Was. So this is where we talk about Jewish life before the war. Um, this is our interactive table, so we've already figured out how to use it. It's um, 8,000 plus photos from life before the war. What's great about this is we have a small physical space, but we have lots of information packed into this museum. There's over 30 hours of information on the audio guide, and there's 8,000 photos in here. So you can spend all day just at this table. Um, you can choose a photo, read a caption, um, they're, they're categorized by family, by themes, by country. So if you look at related photos, it brings up all the other um, related photos in the database. And so how they were sort of reflected in the death camps and the of the Holocaust. If you open up the drawers, um, you'll see um, books that were burned, um, Nazi flags. Um, in these cases, you'll see um, lots of propaganda, including um, school books. You know anything about my children? Like I say, a boy, like a little girl. I say, no, I don't know nothing because they bring their own to different trucks. About, about my husband, I don't know what happened to him too. Because I say, but how about daddy and mommy? I say, no, I don't know what happened to daddy and mommy too. But I already knew what happened to daddy and mommy. One day I was going to the coal mines. I was selling eight chimneys burning away 24 hours a day. At the time I didn't even know what a crematorium was. Because the only two next to me was there before me. I don't spoke any Yiddish, I asked him in Hebrew. And I asked him, well, what is those chimneys burning away from? What I come about so far as do, we don't speak Yiddish. But I, today I know, at the time I didn't. So, what is those chimneys burning over there? He said to me, you, you don't know what it is? No, I don't. He said, this is the crematorium chest where your parents, your grandparents, been sent there to be cremated. Until we saw that, we couldn't believe it. We had movies, you know, for the public to see after the war. I still remember the screaming. They were the ones that were brought into the camps. First thing that they did is they gave them a, a number, had them shaved, went into the uh, shower, which was really If you shower. want to see a number, you can see it right here. Only at Auschwitz, only at Auschwitz, did people who were going to work as slave laborers were issued a number. The family of my father, my mother, and my brother, we had the border. The final transport of 10,000 Jews in March 1944, I was between them. In early July 1940, Dr. Joseph Mengele, Angel of Death, selected 89 of the Birkenau boys, I and my cousin between them, between the ages 14 and 16. They didn't take my mother. Uh, there's varying estimates of how many children uh, died during the Holocaust, but it's between 1.2 and 1.5 million, so we did 1.2 million. 
because um, we have limited space. But um, the idea is like going to the Western Wall in Jerusalem um, is that you can now that we've been on our tour, we have names of children who have died in the Holocaust. You can kind of write a note or a prayer or a reflection on your museum experience and put it in the wall. If she looks familiar to you, um, that's because you've either seen her in the last days swimming in Auschwitz, or of course that famous film, Freedom Writers. So without further ado, Renee Firestone. Well, let me tell you that uh, the 27th of January 1945 was the liberation of the most infamous extermination camp in Poland called Auschwitz. Uh, by the way, this is the camp, of course, where my mother was gassed, my little sister, whose picture is enlarged at the end of this hall, who was murdered there, and uh, where I spent nine months myself. So they took everybody that was highly, as I said, the Germans defeated these Polish people, and they took everybody to the train station, and we were on our way to Auschwitz. Now this is 44. This is like almost the end of the war. We knew what was Auschwitz, because there was always a couple of people throughout the war that were able to somehow escape and tell the story of what was going on. Well, then is that some overseers and I? Our overseers are called capos, and the capos carry clubs like baseball bats, and they come and start beating us. They don't tell us what they want from us, what, what, what should we do. They just start beating and pushing and shoving all day long. This is going on. Thousands of us, of course, yelling something in German which sounds like Zeil Appel. Nobody knows what is Zeil Appel. And at that point, I knew that we are doomed. 